You know, Hell Let Loose may have been taken over by Team 17 and no longer technically a Black Matter production, but looking back on the old Black Matter Kickstarter for Hell Let Loose that was a long, long time ago now, we can actually see the future of the game. It has been predicted for us. Oh my word. I think we should get into this. Right, so those trenches over there, son, they're going to be our first port of call. We're going to clear them out. We're going to sticky them up with Vaseline. I'm going to slide through them like a fucking slip and slide. Then once we're done that, put out an outpost, make her our home, cook up some beef body, and then... Uh, Call of Duty games have really lost their way, eh? So recently, due to the drama, How Let Loose is going on a big wind-up. They're trying to get everything sorted and everything refined back to the stage it should be. We've recently just had an update adding in some night maps into the game, which is great fun, some more patches and fixes, and later on in the next month, we should be getting the full UK or British forces rework, fixing everything that went wrong from that patch back. Almost seven, eight months ago now. It feels like it hasn't been that long, but Jesus Christ, how time flies. But the El Alamein map is the big one, the big desert map that was just way too big and people needed to have it refined and fixed to fit the gameplay style that Hell Let Loose has nurtured over the last five years. But now it's time to talk into the future. This was always the plan, content to be king with the new acquisition from Team 17. They've got the budget and they've got the skills to do it. Unfortunately, it was rushed out so fast, so they've had to slow it down. But we do know what's coming next. On the roadmap that was released a few months back, we saw that the Finnish and Polish forces were coming. This is something that has been delayed and kind of put on the back burner for now, but I think it's kind of a given that that was already worked on and is probably in its final stages of development as well. These aren't going to be full new factions, but just additions to the factions that we already have fighting on the Axis or Allies side. But when it comes to full new factions and full new updates, we can take a look at the original Kickstarter from 2017 to see what this game is going to offer us. Looking at the goals section, we can see there's a St. Marangli's map at 210,000. Well, we've got that. Strafe run call-ins, Carrington map, mobile artillery, something that has been mentioned by the developers coming in the future. Flamethrowers, Hurtgun Forest, light tanks, Foy map. These are all things that have been added in that the developers have come true on their promises. But there are remaining goals that weren't necessarily hit on the Kickstarter, but I think if Team 17 are purchasing the game for over $40 million, the goals that they set when they just needed $700,000 are probably all going to be covered. And we can see this because the $400,000 goal was the Russian forces, including two Eastern Front maps. Now, this was something that was actually developed by Black Matter, mostly before the Team 17 takeover, but we did. We got Kursk and Stalingrad. Okay, so what would the next update be? Well, even just after this, at $500,000, are the British forces, including two Operation Market Garden maps. Okay, we didn't quite get that, but hopefully that is still in the works, and they have mentioned that's still coming. The Canadian forces are next. This is a $600,000 goal, and we know that Canada is on the brink of releasing. They're going to be focusing on maps and battles that the British and the Canadians fought together against the Germans. We actually heard this in an interview very recently on the Fresh Baked Goods channel. We're looking at maps that where the British and Canadian forces fought side by side against the Germans, and including the Canadian forces as part of our expansion of, I'll just call them the Allies. So... Commonwealth forces um, and so forth. And we'll, again, we'll do historically authentic uniforms and detailing for those as well. So that leads us to the $700,000 goal. And that's the Japanese forces with two specific theater maps. I think that's still going to be coming. Yo, Charlie, there's an enemy supply truck coming your way. Enemy supply truck coming our way, James. From down the road, down the road, this way. Roger that. That's a tank, that's not a supply it's truck. It's a tank, not a supply truck. <laughs> Fucking supply truck. It's a Panzer four. He's found me. You see, the Pacific Theatre is an interesting aspect. It's one of those ones that is so beloved for its brutality and almost different vibe to everything else that we've seen in World War II titles. The Western and the Eastern Front are both pretty grimy and muddy. Even the African Front feels that similar, dirty, gritty way. But 
the Pacific Theater is a different type of fighting, from guerrilla warfare to fighting with kamikazes to flame tanks to landing on beaches and fighting over small points and islands. It is something that we haven't seen in many games. Battlefield 5's best and biggest peak was when it released its Pacific Theater update. It was the same with games like Battlefield 1943, you know, that old console Battlefield game based in the Pacific Theater. People seem to love this aspect of the war, and it will be coming to hell let loose. You're perfectly safe. What? Where are you seeing these people? Oh yeah, the head. Oi! It's all play drop bar. Oh, Jay. No, no way. You can do this. 25 seconds. Nice. How was that not a headshot? I could only see his head. No, you could see his booty. At least I could. We've had some tip-offs from the developers themselves. In that same interview, they mentioned the Pacific Theatre coming to the game. Now, this will always be laid down the line, since the focus is on reworking the British faction and adding in the Canadian forces next. But we know it's coming. So what could it be adding? Deployable mortars, one or two people being able to carry these things and fire them from different positions, along with mobile artillery, something that has also been mentioned. A kind of fix to the artillery problem that Hell Let Loose has at this point in time. With the Pacific Theatre would probably be the addition of some amphibious vehicles, whether it's just landing crafts or even commander abilities to call in boat support as well. That's something that I could definitely see from the Hell Let Loose team. Pacific maps like Iwo Jima, Okinawa and Guadalcanal, they would go so well within this Hell Let Loose theatre. Especially with 50 versus 50, you could almost fill a whole map if done well on something like Iwo Jima, or fighting up the hills in the more mountainous terrain of Guadalcanal. They would add a completely different aspect, new terrain that we haven't seen before. Even some of the newer maps like Remagen or El Alamein that are trying to do something a bit different still feel very much of the same and, well, El Alamein was the most different that we've had, but we know how well that went, and until that's fixed, I can hardly say that it is a usable map that people actually like to play. To our left. He's coming left. Not much I can do. Right, cover me, I'm gonna nade him. Hmm. He hit something. Nope, that was the nade. He hit my mine. He got my mine. Uh, outpost is gone. There's still someone there. He's close. Got him. Hell. So there's the multiple. Because one the, of them uh... definitely hit my mine there. Someone. Oh, they just fucking the right. Oh, okay. I'm crouched down and he's taking me head off. <laughs> there goes our mine. <laughs> <laughs> I just look behind and it's just a plume of smoke comes up out of the trench. <laughs> nice. As mentioned in the podcast of the developers hinting at what's coming next, they've mentioned that they'd also love to do more of the Mediterranean as well. I don't know if we'd see that before the Pacific since I definitely think the Pacific is something that's more on people's radar. Not only that, but if they are following this Kickstarter still, which it seems like they are vaguely doing, that will be coming, along with the hints in that same podcast that a flamethrower tank model has been tested and is being worked on. And we know who famously loves their flamethrower tanks. Okay, I get it, the Churchill crocodile does that as well, but the Japanese had some cool stuff. Not that it was all that good. Yet for now, it is time to just see what they do. Howlet Loose and Team 17 are in their proving era. They have to prove to the players and the fans that have built this game up from where it was that they can take that mantle, that they can push it into another era. Not just adding in a ton of new content, but refining it, making sure that it is all quality and not just focused on quantity. I think they can do it, but I think patience is still needed and I think so much more from Team 17 is required for them to really prove their worth. But hey, I'm all down for it. More content is always fantastic, but it has to be, unlike the British forces, up to a certain standard.